Inspector Gadget is a framework. If you are using BPF, if you are developing an application and you need to use eBPF to monitor the system, then Inspector Gadget could help you. Hello, everyone. I'm George Arteiro. We are back here at the Open at Microsoft show. We have Mauricio Vasquez. Hey, Mauricio. Welcome to the show. Hey, George. Thanks for having me. Very happy to be here to speak it's, about Inspector Gadget. It's great to have the Inspector Gadget team back on the show. We had the episode last year. You can check on the, on the video comments. But we're going to deep dive a little bit more on the Inspector Gadget. And welcome and tell me what's Expecto Gadget and what we can expect that from that deep dive. Yeah, sure. So Inspector Gadget is a tool, is a framework that we can use to collect data to observe Kubernetes cluster and Linux host. We are mainly using BPF. So that's like the quick description of the project. That's so, that's great. I can see your, your screen there, and uh, that's uh, InspectorGadgets.io page. Yeah, right. So I could describe the project like in two different ways. So, you know, there is this BPF technology that is super powerful, super efficient, but at the same time, it's like a little bit difficult to use. So Inspector Gadget is a framework. If you are using BPF, if you are developing an application and you need to use eBPF to monitor the system, then Inspector Gadget could help you. So the reason is that when you develop eBPF, you also have to implement a user space application that is going to take care of loading those BPF programs into the kernel, getting the information that those programs are generating, and a lot of different things that you need to do to, to make your whole data flow work. So we realized that many folks in the community are doing the same. So we say, OK, why not to try to create a framework so folks can only focus on developing BPF, and then they can use a framework that does all these common tasks for them. So that's one part of Inspector Gadget. That's the framework part. And the second part is, is a set of tools. So we provide a lot of already to use tools that we call gadgets, more on that in a second. So folks that want to inspect the systems, folks that want to uh, get observability, to get metrics from the system, they can use the gadgets that we have available without having to write BPF code. That sounds great. If you break this down a little bit, you know, I'd say I always like to understand. Some people don't know what CBPF, um, and um, what I like on the Inspector Gadget myself is that, you know, that flexibility to package a gadget inside yeah. like a container image. Yeah, and right. also so flexibility to use your WebAssembly. How can you explain that and you know develop this gadget that can be delivered like a container image is very important yes. for containers? How so what we that? took we, we took a lot of inspiration from, from the container world. You know, there is Docker, so all these technology that change how we deploy applications and so on. I mean, by having Docker, you have all the dependencies there. So we were thinking the same about PPF. So how can we make it easier for developers, for users to, to develop and to use BPF. And we came up with this idea of using the already existing technology for that. So what we are doing in Inspector Gadget is that we are using all the technology used by containers that, that is part of the OCI specification. And we are putting those things like the BPF programs, the WASM modules, all of that inside an OCI, an OCI image, and that what we call a gadget. So yeah, basically a gadget is something that you can share, something that is very modular that you design for a specific purpose. So what, what do we have in those gadgets? We have the PPF programs. So those are the ones that take the data from the kernel. We have the WASM modules. So what happens here is that the BPF is very powerful, but at the same time, it has some limitation because it has to run in the Linux kernel. So you cannot use a lot of complex instructions, let's say. So for instance, if you need to manipulate a lot of strings. If you want to implement regular expressions, that's quite difficult to do in eBPF. So in those cases, when you want to post-process the data that is coming from BPF, you can use Watson for that. So Watson is also very powerful, very flexible technology. So we are trying to combine best of both worlds by having BPF 
and wasm together in the gadgets. Additionally to that, we have something that we call the metadata file. So this is just a description of what the gadget does. So there we have links to the documentation. We have the different output modes that the gadget support, what is the information that the gadget provides. All of that is available there. Yeah, then you package these on open container you know, image that for many people be very nice on the secure side, in my view. Like you can now use a, a container history, like Azure Container History or any other container history, you know, to keep your your gadgets. Is that like a production how people are really using uh, Inspector Gadget using container history? Yes, the, the nice thing is that as we are using the same technology as Docker. We don't have to re-implement all these technologies, all this logic to store the, the gadgets. So you can push that to GitHub Container Registry, to Azure Container Registry, to the one from Amazon, the one from Google, because all of, all of them are using this standard that is compatible with the way we package the gadgets. Do you want to go hands-on now and show us how that works here? Maybe we have the terminal open there. Yeah, sure. I, I have prepared some demos. Be before going in that, I want to quickly describe some of the gadgets that we have. So if all goes to our repository, they can see all the available gadgets that we have. So these are the, the ones that we call official gadgets because are the ones that are maintained by our team. So you can see a, a lot of them. And also, if you go to our tip hub, you can see the official gadgets that we provide, but we there we also have some different gadgets that are provided by the community. So what is nice about this gadget concept is that if you want to implement your own solution, you can implement that, you can push that to a container registry, and then you can share that with the community. So to use the open source way of sharing knowledge with the community. Mauricio, in a high level, can you explain that beautiful diagram on Expecto Gadget, please? Yeah, sure. So this is the architecture of Inspector Gadget. As I mentioned before, we support Kubernetes clusters and we support Linux. So we have both different binaries for that. And then this is like the pipeline that we have. So we have something that we call operators. Those are different components that process the data that is coming from BPF and from WAS. And so we have logic to sort the data, to filter only the events that we are interested on. We also have logic to export that to open telemetry and so on. So that's like the data pipeline that we implemented in Inspector Gadget. So as you can see, it's very modular. And also on the client, we can see that there are different options to use Inspector Gadget. So if you are using that on Linux, you can use Gadget CTL. Or if you are using that on Kubernetes, you can use KubeCTL Gadget as a KubeCTL plugin. Or we also have a UI through the Headland project, and this uses the gRPC interface that we provide. Let me switch to the terminal and show some of the gadgets that we have. So the first gadget that I want to show is Trace DNS. So here I have a Kubernetes cluster running on my machine. I already have deployed Inspector Gadget because I don't have the time to show all this slides. So yeah, this is how we run a gadget. This is very similar to how we run a pod or how we run a container. So as you can see there, and looking at the different DNS requests going on my system. But there are a lot of them. There is a lot of noise. So for instance, one thing that I really like about Inspector Gadget is that you are able to filter the, the things that you are getting. So I think, yeah, let me check what is the name of the pod. So yeah, it's called my pod. So for instance, if I only want to get events from a specific pod on the system, I can configure this filtering and then I, can only focus on the events that I'm interested in. So yeah, when, when you are trying to debug something and you have all that noise going on, this is very difficult to focus on, on fixing the issue. So by using this filter, you can only focus on the, on the things that you are really interested at. Um, yeah, in this case, this is, this is the output of the gadget. So as you can see, there is some information that we get from BPF, like the process ID, thread ID, and so on. But we also have a nice feature that we call enrichment. So instead of just providing like this low level information that is like difficult to understand, I mean, if in Kubernetes you see an IP address, you don't know what is the container of that IP address. So you have to do all that machine manually. In Inspector Gadget, we do all of that for you. So instead of show, just showing the IP address, we say, okay, this 
this DNS request is coming from my pod in the default namespace, and in this case, it's going to the kubesystem, kubedns service. So yeah, we provide a lot of extra information to make it easier for users to debug the issue that they have. Our issue, yeah, we, we, on the previous episode, we did show that on Visual Studio Code extension, that simplifies a lot what you did show here on the command line. Um, how you see, you know, like people, for, for people to understand more what's behind, you know, the scenes on uh, Inspector Gadget itself, how that works? How can we show them the next step? How they can develop the gadget themselves, not just, you know, using what's in there. If they can customize, if they can even help the community. How, how really that gadget works? You have like example there. I know that's not simple for, for someone, but um, there are so many new developers that want to maybe jump in, start to understand uh, uh, kernels and, uh, you know, how to deal with systems. Yeah, sure. What's so your we have been working on that? What's the next step? Yeah, we, we have been working very, very hard on the last months to provide better documentation for developer of gadgets. So here we have all the topics about how to develop a gadget. So we explain what a gadget is and we have like this nice guy that I like really a lot. So you can go how to implement your Hello World gadget. So you, if you follow this, you get, okay, how to implement the BPF program. A lot of comments there saying what are the different things that we have there, how to compile your program, your gadget for the first time. There we are. Then the, the thing that we were talking about before, how to push that gadget to a container registry, how to run the gadget for the first time. And then we keep going, showing the, the users how to add more information uh, to this specific gadget. So yeah, if you folks are interested in implementing a, a, a new gadget, I think this is the starting point. Check the gadget development and, and especially this Hello World gadget that will tell you how to, to create your first gadget. That sounds good. And then you can develop something specific for, for your needs. And also I can see the WebAssembly modules that can be used more as a, as a post-processing. Yeah, we also have a Hello World gadget for that case. So if you need to use WebAssembly because eBPF is not powerful enough for your use case, you can also check this and understand how to use WebAssembly for, for the things that you need. For instance, yeah, here I have something I was talking before. If you need to implement something like a regular expression, this is much easier to do by using WASM type, by using BPA. Yeah, and that's great because that's like, um, a lot of people are using you know, BPF now on service mesh, like Cilio and others, and the BPF became so popular, but spectrum, spectrum gadgets, I think bring something different for the you know, observability in general. And, uh, and I think it's great. Um, the only thing I'll show is the GitHub page. If you can tell if there is a developer that you want to help the project, how, how he should get started there. Yeah. Go to the GitHub page. We have a lot of issues open, a lot of DNR mark as good first issue. And if you need further assistance, please go to our Slack. There we have all the fault from the team willing to reply to any questions that, that you might have. That's that's uh, that's good. That, um, I like the documentation. I see there is some gaps in the documentation. Someone watching, you know, when I help the documentation, yeah, I think Maurice is going to appreciate and the team is going to appreciate. Thank you so much, Maurice. Sure. Too. Um, if you're watching the show, please subscribe to Microsoft Developer Channel, follow the show, and see you all next time. Thank you, Maurice. Thank you, folks. Bye.